Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got three science articles to hit. We'll touch on particle penetration and Earth's weakening magnetic field, on the impact of stars that come too close to ours, and we'll have an excellent look at the top of the sky by a team with its head up its... Here's the last 24 hours on our star where the massive coronal hole dominates the view. Sunspots are small and not flaring. Filaments are less numerous and stable. The solar wind enhancements from the coronal holes only briefly showed themselves with an initial speed surge of the plasma stream last night. Geomagnetic instability is still expected as we interact with the stream over the next several days. First up in today's articles is a look at how the changing magnetic field impacts the penetration depth of space protons. They looked at the South Atlantic anomaly and were able to characterize the amplified particle penetration and impact to the Earth system, not to mention satellites. That is present when the geomagnetic protection of Earth is diminished, and it is another reason the excursion is likely to take out the geospace fleet. Up next, just like the Shoal Star Red Binary passed by our solar system 70,000 years ago during an environmental disaster, one also occurred 2.5 million years ago when another star came too close. The astronomers always want to blame impactors. In this case, the star disturbed the Oort cloud in their minds. But the disaster 70,000 years ago wasn't an impactor, it was the Toba eruption. And as for 2.5 million years ago, the primary change was climatological, no impact or evidence. What if the impact is on the electromagnetic state of the star and the planets of the solar system instead? Lastly, folks, I'm going to roll up my sleeves for this one. Electron density dropping out of the F2 layer of the ionosphere, like a pinhole leak slowly emptying the region. Now, they want to blame greenhouse gases because, of course, they do. But that doesn't work so well way up at the top of the sky, where space dust and solar wind can much more easily interact. Remember when dust hid the electric currents in the Enceladus plume? The dust coming with the galactic current sheet has been spotted, raising the reflectivity ratio of space from the upper corona of the sun to regions out past Pluto. The sticking to electrons works much better than it does with CO2, especially with it lofting that high and trying to do the same trick. Those top of the sky changes are the disaster cycle, and in this case, it's the galactic signature. Yesterday, we did San Diego. Three more winter tour events coming. You can grab your tickets at the link below. Folks, here are some of the articles coming in this month's issue of Observer Review. That will be coming out tomorrow for those subscribed to the e-magazine. It is the top science of the last month in context broken down simply, and it is the only publication on Earth tracking the Earth disaster cycle and magnetic pole shift, not to mention space weather forcing of the atmosphere, agriculture, earthquakes, and human health. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.